matter and energy. What exactly is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. A cow, a chemistry book, goggles, golf clubs, a football team, all of those things have mass and take up space. So what exactly isn't matter? Some examples would be light, fear, faith, electricity, energy. None of these have mass or take up space. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out if these are considered matter or not. Restart when you have an answer. This is what you should have gotten. Water, salt, salad, animals, paper, trees, and air all have mass and take up space. Heat, light, and radiation are all forms of energy and do not take up space or have mass. The one that people miss the most is air, but you can weigh it and it does take up space. Matter can be broken down into two categories based on if it has a variable composition. Over here on the left, this is not a variable composition. Everything's the same. That would be a pure substance. Pure substances have a constant composition. It does not vary from one sample to another. Pure in chemistry means only that one substance is present. If it does have a variable composition, like this picture on the right, notice I have multiple things in the container, then it's a mixture. Mixtures are composed of two or more pure substances that can be separated from one another by a physical process. Some types of pure substances are elements and compounds. If it's an element, there's two types of elements. We have atomic elements, which exist in nature as single atoms. Notice here's neon and it's all the same type and it's only one atom. We have molecular elements, which exist in nature as molecules. Two or more of the atoms of an element bonded together. These are called diatomic molecules and it's the same atom. So in order for it to be an element, it has to have the same type of atoms. Compounds can be molecular or ionic. Molecular compounds are composed of two or more covalently bonded nonmetals. While ionic are composed of a cation, which is our metal, and an anion, which is our nonmetal. So ionic simply is a metal and a nonmetal. Notice there's two different types of atoms, and in this one, there's two different types of atoms. The metals are located on the left of this jagged line, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen and everything to the right of the jagged line are nonmetals. Here are some different elements that you should be aware of and you should know their symbol. Aluminum solid, notice it's all one element. Symbol is AL. Make sure the first letter is capitalized. The second letter is always lowercase. Iron chips, again, all one type of atom. And iron, you should know, is Fe. Some of the elements have symbols that don't look like the element name. That's because the element symbol comes from its Latin name. So iron 
can come from ferric or ferrous, and that's where they're getting the iron. Or copper, you should know, is Cu, and that comes from cupric. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature, but notice all the same type of atom. Mercury is Hg. Sulfur, all the same element, and it is S. The symbol for hydrogen is H. We'll learn later in the year that hydrogen is a molecular element, so it's always H2 when it's by itself. For right now, all you need to know is that hydrogen symbol is H. You also need to be aware of some compounds. We'll be learning more compounds throughout the year, but for now, these are the compounds that you'll be responsible for knowing. Carbon dioxide, you should know the formula, is CO2. Carbon monoxide is CO. Table salt, you may be aware already, is NaCl. Do you remember glucose from biology? Glucose is C6H12O6. What about rust? Rust is made of iron and oxygen. And the actual formula is Fe2O3. And finally, water is H2O. If you change the formula, you change the compound. If we added one extra oxygen to water, it would turn into H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is very different than water and have completely different properties. So make sure that when you write formulas that you're writing correct formulas. Go ahead and pause the video and use the pictures to help you come up with a definition for atom and molecule. Restart when you have an answer. An atom is the smallest particle of an element, while a molecule is made up of two or more atoms. Notice in this molecule, we have two atoms. In this molecule, we have th uh, four atoms. And an atom can't be broken down any further. It's the smallest particle. So what exactly is the difference between the molecule of an element and a molecule of a compound? If you said the molecules of an element are the same atom, while the molecules of a compound have different atoms, then you're correct. In a compound, you have to have two or more types of atoms. While if it's an element, it can only have one type of atom. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out if these statements refer to an element, a compound, or both elements and compounds. So if it's only composed of single particles called atoms, that would be an element. If it's made up of more than one type of atom, then it has to be a compound. Simplest form of matter is an element. Only composed of molecules would be a compound. Elements can also be composed of molecules, but they don't have to be. They could be just an atom. And pure substance would be element and compound. Go ahead and look at these four and figure out if it's a mixture of two compounds, a pure element, a pure compound, or a mixture of two elements. So our mixture of two compounds would be this one. We have this one, which is a compound, as well as this blue one. A pure element should only have one type of atom present. This would be a pure element. A pure compound is going to be made up of two or more types of atoms that are bonded together. And a mixture of two elements 
we have one element and another element, and they're not bonded together to make a compound. Go ahead and finish these and these questions, and then see the teacher to go over your responses. Matter can also be broken down into pure substances versus mixtures. So if it's a mixture, can we visibly distinguish the parts? If not, then it's homogeneous. It's a substance making up the mixture that are distributed uniformly. So it's spread evenly throughout. The composition and appearance are uniform throughout. But the particles are not bonded together. So soda or Coke is made up of sugar, water, carbon dioxide, flavoring, but those things are not bonded together. They're just all mixed together. So that would be homogeneous. If we can see the different parts, like a chocolate chip cookie, then it's heterogeneous. The components are not distributed uniformly. The mixture contains distinct regions of different composition. If I take a bite of the chocolate chip cookie, every bite is not exactly the same. I can see the chocolate, I can see the cookie piece. So if you can see all the different pieces and it's not uniform, then it's heterogeneous. So it says that we have 100 milliliters of water that's added to a graduated cylinder. So what type of matter is in the graduated cylinder at this step? It can be an element a compound, a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. You want to pause the video and figure out which type. So this one said that all we've added is water. Water is a compound. What type of matter is in the graduated cylinder after we add food coloring? So in this second graduated cylinder, what type of matter is present? Element, compound, homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. If you said heterogeneous mixture, you are correct. We have two different layers. And then finally, after 20 minutes, our graduated cylinder looks like this. So what type of matter is present now? If you said homogeneous, you are correct. It's uniform throughout now. There's no longer any distinct layers. You have a list of compounds, elements, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures to classify. On your paper, figure out where each one goes. So potting soil, we're looking at, is not an element or compound. In order for it to be an element, it would have to be on the periodic table. It's not a compound. I do not know the formula for potting soil because it's not a pure substance. So it's some type of mixture. It's either uniform throughout, making it homogeneous, or it's not uniform throughout, making it heterogeneous. Potting soil usually has those little white fertilizer circles in it, making it heterogeneous. Go ahead and classify the rest of those. Restart once you're done classifying. What you should have had under elements is silver, sulfur, copper wire, it's still copper, it's just in wire form, oxygen, and calcium. For compounds, sodium oxide is made up of sodium and oxygen, so that's a compound. Pure water, rust, and table salt are all compounds that you should know the formula for. Homogeneous, uniform throughout, paint, Although, whenever you open up the can, you do have to stir it, but before you use it, it should be homogeneous. Mouthwash, Kool-Aid, air is not a compound. A lot of people miss that one. 
But air is made up of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and many other gases that are just in a mixture. They're not chemically bonded together. Sprite and coffee are all homogeneous. Heterogeneous would be potting soil. Bird seed, again, it depends on your bird seed. If you had the one with sunflower seeds and the little white circles, that would be heterogeneous. Chicken noodle soup, you have chunks of chicken and noodles. Pizza, you have the different layers. Rocky Road ice cream has the marshmallows and the nuts. Dirty water, you have the dirt settling to the bottom. And finally, salad. All those are heterogeneous or not uniform throughout.